Hello everyone. My name is Kara Rickman. Welcome to my webinar series. Um, I am so excited to have you guys join me today. Um, welcome to our Facebook group. Welcome to all you new people that have joined recently. And I am uh, very grateful that I have this opportunity to share with you guys Creative Fun for April. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Um, I'm just going to cover a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, if you are new to the group and you are watching our webinar for the first time, um, if you are commenting during the videos, during the webinar, then you may have a chance to win some free resources today. So keep those comments coming and you guys can answer each other during the webinar. That is totally fine. And if I don't have a chance to answer your questions during the webinar, then um, I will certainly try to answer your questions after the webinar is over um, in the the chat section. So um, I may be able to answer your question um, during the webinar, but if I don't, just hang tight and I will answer it as soon as I can afterwards. So if my Wi-Fi is a little bit slow, it's because I live out in the country and so my face might be frozen for a little bit. But um, my voice will keep going, hopefully, and then just stick on if you can, stay on if you can, and then um, I should come back on. So let's get started, shall we? So this is a, a, just a little bit about me. So I have um, been teaching for about 21 years now, and I have been um, DT and ESL certified. I have taught five years in third grade, which I love third grade. You can do so much with ELA in third grade. Um, and I have been uh, taught 16 years in first grade. Absolutely love first grade. It's my passion. So a lot of the things that I'm going to show you today are for K1 and 2, but certainly can be adapted to 3, 4, and 5, um, especially if you have struggling readers, struggling writers um, in the upper grades. Some of these activities some of these activities might benefit them as well. And also you can adapt these activities for special ed, dyslexic students as well, and 504 students. Um, I have been the team leader for about nine years at my school. I live um, in Bernie, Texas, is a central um, rural town um, north of San Antonio. Um, and so I've been there, um, lived there my whole life. That's where I grew up in the Texas Hill Country. I have been a job embedded trainer for my district. I have taught my teachers um, how to do writer's workshop, reader's workshop, guided reading. I've been an ELA vertical team member. I have been a curriculum writer. I was teacher of the year for my campus in 2009. I was the Seesaw Ambassador. I have been a Seesaw Ambassador for a couple years now. And I'm also a flute and piano instructor as well on the weekends. So um, I'm very busy and I'm excited to be here uh, with you guys today. Hello, Paula. Hello, Jill. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited that you're here. All right, and this is my um, TPT store. I am not asking you to follow my store, but if you are, whoops, I'm sorry. If you are um, interested in any balanced literacy resources like uh, Writer's Workshop, Reader's Workshop, Guided Reading, uh, Literacy Centers, anything like that, and you have, and your district is going towards balanced literacy in the future, then um, you are certainly welcome to check out my store because I have a lot of things that will benefit, would benefit you, okay? So, um, but my store is called Create Your Balance with Literacy. Um, so, then I have a um, Facebook group, of course. If you have teacher friends that are not on our Facebook group and you would like to um, um, invite them to our Facebook group, please do. And then I have a Pinterest account. You can also follow me. If you click on the link later on, I'm going to download this into the, upload this into the Facebook group. You can download um, the webinar for free and then you can click on any of these links and it'll take you right to it. Okay. I have an Instagram account. I have a YouTube channel and I have a blog and then you're welcome to follow me on my blog as well. So this is a webinar series. This is exciting news. So um, each month I will be giving a new webinar and have a preview of the following month. Um, and so if you enjoy this webinar and you get a lot of new ideas, then stay tuned for my next webinar later in April. The next webinar will be showcasing these topics for May. So we have Hans Christian Anderson and the Grimm Brothers. Um, and Charles Peralt. I'm going to be doing a big fairy tale unit in May, and I'm going to be um, showing you guys how I do a fairy tale ball. 
at the end of the year. Um, and then my, I, have, I will be showcasing the Oceans and Beach Unit, Rocks and Fossils, and then, of course, Mother's Day and end of the year activities as well. Okay, so that'll be um, our next that'll be our next webinar. And Jill, I see your question. Is this being recorded? Yes, this is being recorded. And if you look in the Facebook uh, group under the video section, all of my webinars um, are recorded and they're always going to be there for you in case you want to go back and look at them later. OK, that's a great question. So my next webinar is going to be on April the 25th, two o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, I'm really excited to show you guys my one my webinar for May. So here's what we're going to be doing today in our training. Um, we're going to be, of course, I'm going to show you what you can win today if you're commenting. Um, I'm going to show you some digital resources from Seesaw that I have linked into the webinar that you can always go back to later. Um, I'm going to show be showing you your units for April, my mentor text organization, my unit organization, my materials and supplies needed for April my class schedule, my um, Easter activities for craftivities and writing that I love to do for writing for Easter, my Patricia Polacco author study, my Earth Day activities, um, life cycle activities, plant activities, fractions, which are really fun for math, persuasive writing activities, um, some seesaw activities, and then my classroom newsletter templates that I have put together if you need classroom newsletter templates that are editable. And a certificate of attendance. If you would like a certificate for today's training, then you are welcome to message me after the webinar is over, and then I will send you a certificate. So just let me know what name you would like for me to put on the certificate. So these are the resources that you can win today if you are commenting, okay? So keep those comments coming, and then I may pick you to win one of these. So we have four different resources that you can win. You could win the one uh, that's almost gone, an Endangered Animal Research and Writing Unit. This one is really fun if you're doing a lot of research in April, which I know a lot of Texas teachers are doing in April um, with our Teeks Resource System. Um, and so you can do a whole big unit on endangered animals, and then the kids can make lap books, and then they can do their research and writing, and you can staple all of your templates inside of your lap books. So you can win that one, or you can win the um, How Does Your Garden Grow thematic unit on plants. And this unit has is jam-packed full of plant and uh, plant life cycles, parts of plants, um, plant writing, um, research, and then I go through some science investigations that you can do also in the unit. So you're welcome to um, have a choice of that one if you'd like. Um, and also, this is my Easter writing craftivities. Um, let's write about Easter. There's about 10 or 15 so uh, writing different writing craftivities that you can um, write with your students if you uh, want them to write about Easter chicks bunnies lambs tulips whatever you want and so that's really fun if you're doing um some writing fun before easter um, which is this coming week actually <laughs> and then last but not least i have my project-based learning recycling um project if it's called what if everyone did that so i'm going to share with you my pbl unit that i did a couple years ago with my students um that they absolutely loved and um, it was a really big hit. So we did a lot of recycling um, things, d projects um, with my first graders a couple years ago. And I'm gonna share with you what I did for that. So you are welcome to win any of those um, resources. So we're gonna start with our first winner today. And I'm gonna pick Jill Stackhouse. So Jill, you are my first winner. Congratulations, Jill. And then you are going to message me later on after the webinar is over and then you can tell me which resource that you would like, okay? Congratulations, that is exciting. Okay, all right, moving right along. So these are the units that I put together for April and then this is just a recap of what I'm gonna to showcase today. Fractions, Earth Day, Endangered Animal Research, Patricia, Patricia Polacco, insects, persuasive writing, plants, life cycles, and Easter. So a lot of teachers always um, ask, ask me, how do I organize my mentor texts? This is a really big uh, problem for some teachers to get organized. 
Um, and I, which I totally understand because it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. So, um, what I did was I brought, I bought these, um, teal plastic tubs from Walmart and I organized them into units. And so I have these labels and I do have a resource for the labels if you're interested. And then I can, um, link it into the, um, comments later on. Um, and so what I did was, I put all my units, my thematic units, into these tubs. And then I have cubbies in the back of my classroom. And then I um, put all the tubs on top of the cubbies. And so if I ever need my books really fast, like if I forgot to, if I forget to get them out, which sometimes that happens, right? I can run back there, I can grab my book, and I don't have to like hunt for it forever. So it's just a really easy way for me to organize my mentor text. I've also used um, like my filing cabinet before, but I don't like the filing cabinet as well because then the books are stacked on uh, top of each other and then it's really hard to find what I need. But this is a really easy way. I can just grab the tub and I can take it to my desk and pull out the books that I need. So, and then underneath my desk, if you notice right here, um, where my mouse is pointing, I have um, my books that are um, organized by mentor text for Reader's Workshop, Writer's Workshop, and Math Workshop. And so inside those clear plastic tubs, again, these are from Walmart, and I divided my um, books into different um, app skills for each um, unit that I need. For example, Writer's Workshop has adjectives, nouns, verbs, uh, pronouns, pre prepositions, um, all those different uh, skills that I would need so I can just reach under there and pull the book out and and then I'm good to go because we all get busy I know and this is how I organize my thematic units and so um, I have these binders and I have a wardrobe closet that I have all these binders in so I just pull out the binder that I need um, again I have a resource for this um, that you can also click on whenever um, I upload the resource later and so then you can um, you can get all these different covers for your binders and then inside the binder I have it organized by subject so like math reading writing art science poetry and so the thematic unit is um, organized that way so it really helps me stay organized and this is my schedule that I have this year I'm not gonna go through the whole schedule I just want you to know that I have um, the whole morning block of mine is devoted to balanced literacy. It's 120 minutes. So inside of balanced literacy, we have our phonics and spelling. We have guided reading, reader's workshop, writer's workshop, word work, and all that stuff inside in literacy centers inside of that balanced literacy block. And then after lunch, we have our math workshop block, which is 90 minutes. And then we have science and social studies, which is about 30 minutes a day. What we do, we try to do is do social studies within reading our reading block so we can um, tie it cross-curricular if we can so that way we can have science pretty much every day but sometimes it'll be flip-flopped so we do science during reading time if we're doing research um, and so that works out as well too so so these are the units that you the materials that you would need for April you would need a construction paper of, of sorted colors you need writing templates you need interactive notebooks reading math social studies and science notebooks. Um, I also have a poetry notebook as well. Research booklets. Um, you would need um, the theme center. I'm going to show you my rainforest um, thematic unit that I have for my theme center. I'm going to show you my mentor text. You're going to need anchor charts, pocket charts, your author center, and of course your headphones devices um, for your seesaw assignments that you would need. So for Patricia Polacco, I just love Patricia Polacco. She is such a wonderful art author. She's she's wrote so many so many great children's books. And so I have an author center that I have in my classroom every month, and I change out my um, author center. So I usually have a picture of her on the author center, and then I um, run off all the covers to her. Um, mentor text on colored printer and then I put them I laminate them and then I put them on the board so this is what it looks like and so I have this easel in my classroom and so um, I have all the books underneath the easel those drawers and so they go to the author center and they pick out the book that they need and I also have an author center writing template that they would write on and so they would illustrate the beginning middle and end of the story they would write their sentences about the beginning, middle, and end, and then um, at least that they, they have their her picture to look at, and they have different books they can read if they want to. And every month, I have a different author. So there are two different resources that I have for Patricia Polacco. I have uh, Rachinka's Eggs, 
Um, and then I have a uh, fender cake. So for Rajinka's egg, um, I have them decorate an Easter egg. And then they uh, watercolor it with watercolors, paints. And then um, I'm sorry, I was checking my phone. Um, and then they can write about how to dye an Easter egg. So it's first, then next, and last. Um, and that they write about. And then for Thunder Cake, um, I have them illustrate different types of clouds. And then we write about how the different clouds are make different weather um, for from Thunder Cake. So I have these two resources in my store for Patricia Polacco, if you're interested. And so again, you can click on the picture and it'll take you straight to the link. These are some interactive notebooks that um, I have for Retrinka's Egg and for Thunder Cake. So for Thunder Cake, they illustrate um, the, a text to self connection, text to text, text to world, and they write about them. They can also do story elements, character setting, problem solution. And then for Retrinka's Eggs, I have um, theme and then how to dye Easter eggs. This can go along with the project that was on the previous, this one right here. That can be their brainstorming page that they can use for how to dye an Easter egg or how to make uh, how to decorate an Easter egg. So um, you, again, you can click on the picture and it'll take you straight to the resource. And then I found some really fun seesaw activities. That um, hi mom, how are you? Thanks for watching. Um, I have some really cool seesaw activities for Patricia Polacco: how to dec decorate an Easter, Easter egg. And then, of course, these these two are decorating Easter eggs. But um, I know that there's a lot of great stuff on Seesaw if your district uses Seesaw as a platform for um, e-learning. So um, I know a lot of teachers have finished up their e-learning and are going back to the classroom face-to-face -face now, which is a great thing. So these are some great ideas that you can use for both. I try to use um, Seesaw every single day in my classroom. So moving on to Rainforest. Rainforest is one of my favorite, favorite thematic units that I, lo I love to teach about. You can, you can pull in so much into rainforests. You can pull in plants. You can pull in life cycles of insects. You can pull in persuasive writing. Um, you can pull in habitats, ecosystems, weather. I mean, there's so much you can do with rainforest with just with just that one unit. So these are some of my favorite mentor texts that I use for rainforest. I love the great kapok tree. I'm going to share with you some ideas for that. And of course, um, Jane Yolen has a great story. Welcome to the greenhouse. Um, and Gail Gibbons has some great rainforest books. And Jan Brett has a wonderful book called The Umbrella. That's so cute. It's a kind of a spinoff of the mitten. And it's really, really cute. So, and of course, Who is the Beast by Keith Baker is wonderful. Um, we're roaming in the rainforest, and a lot of nonfiction, there's a lot of nonfiction out there that you can use. This was my um, theme center that I had, that, I've, that I have in my room for um, one of my centers. I, I have a theme center, so what that means is whatever the skill is from the thematic unit. So, for example, if I do rainforest, then I would put up posters and pictures on my bulletin board for my thematic unit. And then um, I also have games and I have puzzles and I have mentor text all in within the shelves underneath that bulletin board that the kids can, can use and play with. I have puppets, finger puppets, felt board activities. Um, the possibilities are endless. And then you can also have devices in your theme center. If you, what, if you use um, Epic, if you're familiar with Epic, or if you want them to do a seesaw activity, you can have your iPads or your iTouches, your Chromebooks there, and then they can record themselves. They can upload their picture of their what they did in the theme center, and then they can um, submit it to you. So that would be another great option for technology. This is one of the writing craftivities that I love to do each year, and we talk about the different layers of the rainforest, and this is also in my store. It is um, an, a creative a writing craftivity, and it's a actually persuasive writing craftivity that my kiddos do. Um, in first grade, they um, not necessarily have to write a persuasive writing, but they have to know what persuasive means. Um, and so I take it one step further, and so I have them write a letter to the people of the world, and so they write about how they're going to save the rainforest and why we need to save the rainforest. And so they make this craftivity with the different levels 
Lair layers of the rainforest. We talk about the different animals. Again, you can talk about habitats, ecosystems, and then how animals adapt to their surroundings, um, life cycles. There's just so much that you can pull in with the rainforests. And then these are the writing templates that I have for the rainforest. Um, there's, a there's a persuasive planning page right here. And you have, they have their, they write their argument, then they write three reasons why they should save the rainforest, and then the conclusion at the bottom. And they transfer this over to this page, or you can have them write a letter to the governor or to the president or the people of the world, you know, how to save the rainforest. So it's, it's really, really, it's, it's a good learning experience that they have. And I usually read the Great K-pop Tree first which I'll share with you again in later on the later slides. This is a really fun home project that I've had uh, my kiddos do before. And excuse me, and then um, what they do is they make a rainforest diorama. And this is also in my store. Um, and so they make the different layers with um, shoe boxes or tissue boxes. They create the different layers from the forest floor, the understory, the canopy, and then the emergent layer on top. And then I go step by step about how to create the rainforest diorama and this would be a really fun home project for them to do and then um, display in the library display at your public library or your central office or around your school and they're just so beautiful and it's so fun to see all the creativity that comes from your home projects so they also have a flip book that they put on the side of the box here that has the different parts of the layers and they flip open the flip book here they glue it on the side and they flip it open and then underneath each flap they can write about it so this is also a link that you can click on later it's really fun these are some seesaw activities that I pulled off a of seesaw um, so um, I see the rainforest animals they can they can uh, write about each animal and then this one down here they can actually drag the animals into the different inter it's an interactive one where they can drag the animals to the right layers it's really fun. So again, these these seesaw activities can be put on um, a, on a device. They can take their device to the center, the thematic unit center, and then they, they can uh, respond to whatever they're doing. Um, lots of fun. Lots of different options. So going along with rainforest, you could also pull in endangered animals because in the rainforest, practically almost all the animals are endangered because they're they're being cut down, but um, the kiddos don't realize that, that these animals are endangered. So first of all, you have to tell them what does endangered mean? You know, that they are in trouble, that they're getting less and less and less. And if we don't help them by, um, you know, saving the planet, saving the earth, goes along with Earth Day, you know, then that these animals are going to become extinct. So we need to figure out ways that we can save them. So these are some great mentor texts that I read. Um, one of my favorite ones is this green one up here at the top, Endangered Animals. I love this one. I love this one, Almost Gone. Um, and so I named my research writing thematic um, research resource after this book. So this is the book that I read with that unit that I do. And then, of course, The Great k -Pop Tree is excellent because it's from persuasive point of view. And then Lynn Cherry does a great job with writing that story and um, from the animal's perspective from the animal's point of view um, and it's not every day that the kiddos get to understand the animal's point of view so I just love the great k -pop tree so these are the some of the mentor texts that you can use for that and then these are the lap books that I have the kids make so they get to choose their favorite endangered animal that they would like to research um, and so these are really fun I use those colored um, file folders from Walmart you get a big box of them there's like 50 or 50 to 100 of them in a box for about five dollars and then they can choose their color of their lap book they can create the cover by using um, the templates in the resource they can also cut the strips of brown paper to make the trees and then make the I tell them to make green clouds for the trees at the top so um, and then they um, all the research templates that they do, which look like this, then they can staple, you can staple them into the lap book, okay? Now you can make lap books any different way that you want to, but these this is just the way that I have found that's really easy. Um, and it's not so time, 
time consuming into making them and you know stapling them all in there but these are the templates that they can staple in so they can have a choice board I give them this choice page first they can choose four of their favorite animals they illustrate the animal then they write a sentence about them and then one of those four animals is the one they can do the the main research about and if they finish that one they can start a new one they can do a new animal then they have this globe here of the continents and they have to color in where their animal is from so if it's the Amazon rainforest of course they'd color in South America um, and so different animals like the panda bears from China so they would color in different parts of the world that their animal is from then they have a diagram of their animal they would label the parts here's a persuasive planning guide again that they could write their argument about how to save this animal give three reasons and then the conclusion at the bottom and then their animal statistics so they would do the diagram with labels they would do their habitat draw their habitat what does it eat what's its diet where does it live what continent is it from is it a mammal an insect a reptile or a bird or a fish um, how long can it live and then uh, what is its predator so a lot of the kids they put people because yes people are killing them because they're um, cutting down the rainforest so they um, they can decide what kind of predator they want to write so they can do research um, on the world encyclopedia they can do pebble go they can use epic there's a lot of great books on epic that read to them so anyway I mean the possibilities are endless and then these are the um, endangered animals um, seesaw activities that I pulled out that I thought were really really great this is a research one for tigers and then this one they have to sort the animals into their habitat so again uh, learning about different habitats and ecosystems is really important too all right so moving on to Easter you guys keep those comments coming because I'm gonna give away some more resources in a little bit um, these are some great mentor texts for Easter um, I know that our time is limited and um, Easter is really not part of our teaks but you can pull out the skills by reading certain mentor texts for example you can pull out author's purpose beginning middle and end sequence of events cause and effect persuasion persuasion um, inferencing lots of different skills that you can pull out these are some great books and then of course there's how to catch the Easter Bunny I love this book by Adam Wallace um, you can they can write a procedural text about how to catch the Easter Bunny um, the Easter Bunny's assistant is really cute and I have a resource that I'll share with you in just a minute about that um, about how to they want to be the Easter Bunny and they have to write an application um, the Easter egg by Jan Brett is so cute and so fun I love it um, and of course Retrinka's eggs is really fun um, I shared with you some more um, resources for that so these are some fun and then I also like to pull in some math um, enter text for math so 10 Easter eggs is fun there's a jelly bean book that I read that you could do graphing of jelly beans as well these are some writing craftivities that I use for Easter um, this bag right here is what I've made with my classes before if you do an Easter egg hunt um, you could have the kids make an Easter bag out of white a white paper bag and then um, you can make the little whiskers and the eyes and the on the nose and the ears um, and so you can have them make an Easter bag put little uh, green grass in the bottom and then they can hunt for Easter eggs if you have an Easter egg hunt I know some schools still do um, and this is the persuasive writing uh, for I want to be the Easter Bunny they have to persuade um, somebody that they could make a really good Easter Bunny and why and then I've got an Easter chick Easter basket here's how to catch an Easter Bunny and then my Easter lamb so this is in that resource let's write about Easter these are some Easter templates that I have for that oh yes Janetta uh, that is so true love those mentor texts are really good for pulling in all those skills absolutely um, and so here's the Easter Bunny application that they have to draw they have to decorate an egg and they have to prove that they can decorate an egg first which is really fun and then they have to draw themselves as the Easter Bunny and then they have to write about why they would make a really good Easter Bunny here's um, author's purpose 
This, this is, if I were the Easter Bunny, I would wish, they have to write wishes about it, how to dye an Easter egg. Here's how to catch the Easter Bunny, the materials and supplies that they would need, and then, of course, the story elements, character setting problem solution. And then these, these are also resources that you can click on as well. These are some fun seesaw activities that you can use. Um, they have to solve addition and subtraction questions for on Easter eggs. And then, of course, how to catch the Easter bunny. This is the, the seesaw version of the how-to, the procedural writing one. So you can click on those later and save them to your library. All right, so we're going to select a second winner. All right, I'm gonna select um, Janetta Graham. Again, Janetta, you are awesome. So you're gonna get another free resource. So you could think about which one you'd like. Congratulations, Janetta. All right, so we're moving on to um, the persuasive writing. So I know that um, in Texas, uh, for the Teeks Resource System, we have our skills uh, for writing our persuasive in April. So, and I know a lot of dif different um, states have that too as well. So, um, these are some really great persuasive writing mentor texts that you can use. The Easter Bunny's assistant is fabulous. Hey Little Ant is fabulous. Um, why Should I Recycle is great. What If Everyone Did That is great. The Great Kapok Tree is great. I want a new room. I want to go home. I want an iguana. Those are great, great mentor texts that gives the students a, a really good grasp of what persuasion is and how to write it because it's kind of tricky for some students to get that in their mind about how to you use opinion writing and they have an opinion and they have to use all these different you know skills to write their opinion writing. Um, so these mentor texts create a really good foundation for that. And then for these, I have, of course, I've shared with you these two persuasion activities that I have in my store. I've got, I want to be the Easter Bunny. So you can click on this one later. And then why should we save the rainforest? And they're going to do use their opinion writing for these two. So again, they're going to write their persuasion about how to save the rainforest. They give three reasons and then a conclusion at the bottom. And they can write a letter to the people of the world about how they can save the rainforest. And then, of course, their Easter Bunny application about why they would make a really good Easter Bunny's assistant or the Easter Bunny as well. Okay, you're welcome, Janetta. I hope you enjoy what you pick out. All right, this is really fun too. So if you um, love to do Reader's Workshop and you love to um, have the kids write different persuasion topics, persuasive topics. This is really fun. So if you do an insect unit um, with Eric Carl or um, Life Cycles of Insects, this is perfect. This is a good tie-in, like you can teach cro cross-curricular. So you can read different books. For example, you can read Hey Little Ant. Then you can give them this template. And this is the template that I put on Google Drive. It's free. You can click on it later. And you can download it, and it's got four different templates. It's got ants, it's got ladybugs, dragonflies, and butterflies. So if, there, if you read Hey Little Ant, which is persuasive, the little boy is trying to, um, I'm sorry, the ant is trying to persuade the little boy not to step on him. And why? So you can have the kids write about if they would want to be an ant or not, and why. So they're going to give three reasons. And so here is my example, and then they have to draw an, they have to draw a picture of what would happen. Um, and so they're writing about persuade someone why you should or should not be an ant. Yes or no. Yes, I would want to be an ant, or no, I would not want to be an ant. And here's why: persuade someone that you want to be a ladybug, and why? Yes or no. Three reasons why: persuade someone that you want to be a dragonfly, or persuade someone you want to be a butterfly. Okay, so these are really fun. This is a Google Drive um, free resource for you guys, okay? And they're really fun to do for Reader's Workshop. So again, here's some great Seesaw activities that you can use um, for opinion writing. And then, of course, Hey Little Ant is really fun for your opinion writing. And you can uh, click on these later. 
And you can just have this one right here is a blank template that you can use for anything, which I thought was really nice because we all need those blank generic templates that you can use. You can adapt to anything. So I thought that was really nice that you could use for that. All right, moving on to plants. So I know also a lot of teachers like to um, do the life cycle of a plant in April. And so um, this is great for that. So there's a lot of great books, mentor texts that you can use. The Tiny Seed is um, from Eric Carle. This is great if you want to grow sunflowers in your class. The Magic School Bus has a um, plant, plant seeds book. Xenia's Flower Garden. My Garden by Kevin Hinks, A Tree is a Plant, A Reason for a Flower, How a Seed Grows. These are some great mentor texts you can use for plants. And then these are some of my craftivities that are in that thematic unit for how does your garden grow. So you can have your kids grow sunflowers or llama beans, pumpkin seeds, whatever you want. And I have them hanging in the window. And I'm going to share with you what that looks like in a couple more slides, okay? And they have this observation journal that they use right here. And it's a it's a potted plant. That, it's a template that has a pot on it. And so they color the sunflower on the front cover. And then inside they have different um, days that they observe the plant. They draw it. They illustrate the color. They write labels on the plant. And they write about what, it, what it's doing. So after we plant the sunflower seeds in the window, I like using sunflower seeds because they are really fast growing. They don't take much at all to grow. Just I, I, just, I just put a couple of cotton balls in there in the bag and I spray them with water. And I put some, I put about 10 different seeds in there in case some of them don't grow. And then a couple of days, they're already growing. And it's amazing how fast they grow. And then they get to take them home um, after a week or so and then they get to plant them at home. This is um, a res this is a cute little re uh, project that you could have the kids um, color different vegetables, like make a vegetable garden, and you they could have um, labels of their different vegetable garden. And then there's a book called In the Tall Tall Grass that you can read. And then they make um, the grass by just cutting the construction paper to make strips of grass. Then they put flowers on there, and then they can put different insects um, in the tall tall grass, and then they can write about it. It's really fun. So this is my window that I had a couple years ago, um, not yet, not last year, but year before last, um, and this shows you how my window looks with my different sun, sunflower seeds in the window. And then I have their observation journal, which they record daily, and then I have day one, day two, day three, all all the way to day ten. And then you can tell right here, you can see how they've labeled the different parts of the plant, if the root is coming, the stem and then the seeds that didn't grow, and then the cotton ball. So he says, I think that I'm going to get some big sprouts. He actually made a prediction about what he was going to see, so that was really cool. So you can click on this later on and download the, the resource. It's called From Seed to Sunflower. And then this is my uh, the, the seesaw um, activities that I pulled out for this. You, these units, uh, the parts of the plant, and then of course the life cycle of a plant. So, speaking of life cycles, these are some really fun mentor texts that you can read for life cycles. Um, I like to read from Tadpole to Frog, um, and then Ladybugs by Gil Gibbons, from Egg to Chicken, Bumblebees, The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle, and then from Caterpillar to Butterfly. Um, is really fun. So these are some great mentor texts that you can use. And you can also, if you um, are in second grade, I know, like, I know second grade likes to grow chicks, hatch chicks in the incubator. So you can do chicks. You can have ladybugs. I have grown ladybugs before. Um, I This year we're doing praying, praying mantises. We just got our praying mantis in last week. Um, and they're still in the cocoon. So we put, uh, we have a net that we use to put the praying mantises in there, and then we do an observation journal. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing honeybees or bumblebees, but you could always watch YouTube videos of them. You can do um, cat uh, caterpillars, definitely caterpillars, and you can you can also do tadpoles. You can have um, a little aquarium of tadpoles. Those are really fun. That kids really love to watch tadpoles turn into frogs. These are some uh, life cycle craftivities that I've done before. 
Um, I, I love using lap books, those colored uh, file folders. I love using those. They're so fun. The kids love them and they really look cute on sat on your bulletin boards. So um, you could have one about praying mantis right here. You could have one about chickens. You can have one about frogs. This is a craftivity that I've um, hung in my classroom before from the ceiling. Um, and that shows the different life cycle of a frog here in the, on the tummy. And then they like to make his tongue because his tongue goes around. You can curl the tongue and that's really fun. You could do a red-eyed tree frog if you want to do a rainforest unit and you want to incorporate the red-eyed tree frog for life cycles, that's really, really easy. If you want to do the blue morpho butterfly for the rainforest, that's really easy also. Um, and so here on the tummy is the life cycle of a butterfly. And then the blue butterfly, this is an, another one of my crafts that I like to do. And then um, the life cycle of a ladybug in the middle right here. This one's really fun because they open up his wings um, and inside the wings is a life cycle inside on his tummy. And then you get to glitter the spots on the front and then they write about the life cycle on the side. So the possibilities are endless. This is actually inside of my Living on Life Cycles resource. It's a bundle, um, which is um, also in my store. So you can click on that and, and check out all the different life cycle stuff on there. And then these are the Seesaw Life Cycle um, fun activities that I pulled through. This is the this is the Life Cycle of a Butterfly. They can drag over the different parts of the butterfly. And then this one is the Ladybug Life Cycle. They can do this one where they drag over the words to match, um, which is interactive, which is fun. So we all know that Earth Day is also in April. And I believe it's like, I want to say it's like April the 22nd or something like that. So it's around the end of April. Um, these are great mentor texts that you can read for Earth Day. Um, I love the Lorax. Um, recycle. Uh, Gail Gibbons has another one for recycle. What does it mean to be green? Earth Day Hooray. Why should I recycle? The Earth Book by Todd Parr is really fun. Big Earth Little Me. Uh, rally for recycling. There's also also compost um, compost too is really fun too. So these are great mentor texts for Earth Day. These are some craftivities that I have made before with my class. Um, this one was from the Lorax. So for copyright reasons, I'm I'm not allowed to put anything in my store from Dr. Seuss because it's a copyright. So um, I'm just going to share with you what I made, and then you can recreate it yourself. I used popsicle sticks to make the Lorax trees, um, not the Lorax trees, the trees from the Lorax. Um, and then I put, I just drew lines on them and I used those pom poms to make the top of the tree. And then I had the kids write the quote from the story that says, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. We need to care about our earth, plant trees, flowers, and forests. The animals need our help, so think about what you can do to help in the future. So they can write their quote from the story, and then they write about what they can do to help make the earth better. So this was a um, fun craftivity, and I just hand drew <laughs> the Lorax. <laughs> yeah, he looks kind of strange, but um, you can just hand draw him, or the kids can hand draw him, and then glue him on there. So that's a really fun craft that you, they can do for that. Then I have these Earth Day um, craftivities that are also in my store. So you click on the picture. It'll take you straight to the Earth Day craftivity. Um, and then they can write about how can I help the Earth. We love our Earth. And our Earth Day, on Earth Day, I pledge to. These can also be great persuasive writing that you can do with your kiddos. So these are some um, interactive Notebooks that you could use for Earth Day. Now this is getting into my project-based learning activities that I did before. Um, so I did a big old unit on recycling a couple years ago and we talked about the three different types of recycled pa uh, paper, plastic, metal, and they could sort the different pictures inside of these this template. And then they had to um, bring in all these recycled products. They brought in milk jugs, um, toilet paper rolls, they brought in um, milk cartons, newspapers, plastic bottles, anything that they had from home that they wanted to make into a, a new product. 
they brought in all these recycled materials and then they had to work in groups and to create a new product so they had to fill in this this template it says material one two three and four um, and they had to plan out what they were going to make and I'll show you in just a minute my pictures for that you could also pull in animal habitats with the recycling unit here they had to illustrate four different habit uh, their favorite habitat from um, I read the story some habitat stories and what if everybody did that book um, and they had to illustrate how habitats are affected by people not recycling and then they could do this um, focus poem right here which is called re-recycle and they could cut it out and they could glue it in their focus poem journal so this is the recycling PBL project that I did um, so you can tell here at the bottom this is the template that they filled out um, and then they could recreate something to use in nature so most of the groups decided they wanted to make a bird house or a bird feeder um, which really, which was really fun. I mean, and, and I just turned them loose, and they they could uh, plan by themselves, and it was really fun because I gave each each group a job. They each had um, like a team manager that had to keep them in line, and then a materials manager, um, and so they had to plan out what they were going to make. And so after they planned what materials they were going to use, and then over here it says my recycled product. They had to draw it, and they had to write the steps to to make it first, then next, and last. Okay, so then they had to they had to work together. So I have what's called Fahrenheit Friday, and so on Fridays that's when I do my science investigations or my science um, experiments. And so I use Fahrenheit Friday day for them to take the time to create this project. Now it does take time, and this took about uh, three or four weeks. And then within my science block during the week that's when we would bring in all the other things like why do we recycle and sorting the different recycling products but on Fridays they actually got to build it and then this these were some Earth Day craft, uh, seesaw activities that I pulled out that I thought were really nice um, this is the book um, Earth Day every day they could read about it and it has a template that they can fill out about that and then I can help the earth buy is a um, they can they can use this as a persuasive writing as well to write about how they can save the earth. So Easter to me is a really fun, fun time for math activities. And so um, I've done a couple things for Easter in the past. This was two years ago um, when I made, I created these addition and subtraction eggs. And, and so at my teacher table, when I was do when I would do math workshop, then we would have these um, addition and subtraction Easter eggs, and they had to figure out what the sum or the difference was, and then they had to match the Easter egg onto the platter. And on top of the on top of the platter, I wrote all the different teen numbers, eleven through twenty one, I think it was. So, because I had to have have enough numbers for each one, they had to match the egg with the correct sum or difference. So, this little girl you can see is doing the addition eggs, and that's really fun. They like that. You can also play bump, and if you don't know how to play bump, it's whenever you have two dice, they roll the dice to get the sum, and they have counters. They have uh, snap cubes, and so you put the snap cube on the sum. So, on the bunnies, they have a number, and then. Um, they put the cube on there. Now, if their partner gets the same number or the same sum, they get to bump them off and get their cube. But if that same kid gets the same number twice, they get to stack the cube on each other. When they're stacked, then their partner cannot bump them off. If they roll an 11 or a 12, they get to go on the free space. So whoever, whoever uses up all their cubes first wins. If um, you are already... If the if the if your partner is already stacked and you roll the same number and you can't bump them off, then you lose a turn. So they really like to do bump, and I have this in my store as well. So you can click on the picture and it'll take you straight to the resource. And I have them for every month and holiday. So in month of April, um, I know for Texas we are going to do fractions. So these are some really fun craftivities that you could use for fractions so my favorite one is the fraction pillar um, and I got this idea from Kara Carroll who is the TPT guru and she has the blog um, first grade parade and so this was um, a project that I put together for my kiddos to make a caterpillar so on the caterpillar they have 
they had to use uh, four different colors, but they had to decide how many of each color to use. They create the caterpillar, they draw the legs, they draw the, make the little antennas, and they, they curl them, and then they put the googly eyes on there. And then they have to write about how many are green, how many are pink, how many are yellow, how many are orange. So they write the fraction. So for example, three out of eight circles are green. Two out of eight circles are pink. Two out of eight circles are yellow. One out of eight circles are orange. So you, this is a really fun, again, another way to do cross-curricular with your science, with life cycles, insects, rainforest, with fractions. Another fun thing, two other fun things to do right here, you could make a gumball machine. And you could do gumball fractions. So again, they can choose four different colors. Um, and so you could write two out of 12 gumballs, gumballs are red. Two, three out of 12 gumballs are blue. Four out of 12 gumballs are yellow. Three out of 12 are green. So another cute way to do fractions. And then of course the pizza, Pizza is an easy one. They can create a pizza. They can make the pepperoni, the mushrooms, or whatever, and then put the divide the pizza into fourths or sixths or whatever they want to do or halves. And then it says, fraction pizza, I divided my pizza into fourths and I shared it with, and then they have to write their friends' names, who they shared their pizza with. And, of course, it has to show um, an even, equal amount of shares. Okay, so just some really cute ideas for math. I, I typically do these math craftivities at my teacher table because then I can really kind of help them because um, it has a lot of different pieces. And so I have um, a shelf right next to my guided math table that um, I have all the different pieces in there that I can just grab and take out and then they can bring their the supply box and their scissors or glue to the teacher table while we're doing guided math rotations. So, and then I like to hang these in the hallway or I like to hang these in my classroom. I have the um, clothespins hanging from the ceiling. Another cute thing that you can do for math is um, you could do addition and subtraction mats. And I have these for every month and holiday. So I have the Easter baskets. So you can use bunny erasers. You can use Easter egg erasers. You can use bug erasers, jelly beans, plastic bugs. Easter candy is fun, you know, um, M&Ms, whatever you want to have them do to count and man man manipulate. And then um, they write the um, subtraction sentence at the bottom or they can write the addition sentence at the bottom. Um, this one is really fun at the bottom here because I use these <laughs> plastic <laughs> insects on the leaf there. Another way you could do things cross-curricular, teach cross-curricular is so, so much fun. Um, so you can use the plastic bugs to put on the leaf and then they can make up a addition or subtraction sentence. Another extension of this is that they can take a picture of this, they can upload it to Seesaw, and then they can record their voice, they can record themselves telling a story problem about their plastic animals or their erasers or their jelly beans. So that's just another, um, another fun thing for them to do um, in math that and I like to do this at my teacher table and after they learn how to do this with different counters you could have this you know you could cycle it out with different counters and different mats for the different holidays and it's really really fun so and this is also in my store so you click on the picture it'll take you straight to it okay so I have given, this is um, the fourth webinar that I've given in for my webinar series. I have January, February, March, and April. So um, I'm going to do one more that's going to be for May, which is very exciting. And so all of these webinars are free. So if you click on the picture, it'll take you to any of these webinars. If you miss the one from March or February, or January, you can always go back and look at it again. And each webinar has clickable links that you can use, that you can click on and take you straight to the resource if you want to look at it, okay? I've got a webinar for Math Workshop, a webinar for Writer's Workshop, webinar for Reader's Workshop, Focus Poetry, and then Balanced Literacy, how do you fit it all in, and then Guided Reading and Guided Writing. Here's my webinar for January and February and March that you can look at later. And then if you need a writing, a newsletter uh, template for your class, for your parents, 
I also have a link that you can click on here and take, takes you straight to the resource for this. And this is editable. So you can also, you can create this however you want to. You can write in your name at the, name at the top. You can write important dates. You can write in um, what topics are you doing for math, social studies, science, ELA, and spelling. So again, click on the picture and it'll take you straight to it. And if you need a certificate today, um, I'm going to um, give you a certificate for one hour's worth of training. So if you would message me after the Facebook Live is over, and then I will be glad to send you this um, award for your certificate. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna um, go ahead and pick one more winner today. Um, and Paula Bedard, you're gonna be my winner again. And I'm so glad that you are always joining me and you're always um, commenting. So congratulations, Paula. Um, and then you can pick out which resource you'd like to win today. So remember, um, Jill, Janetta, and Paula are my three winners. So you guys can pick out, um, there's four different resources. If you don't have these already, you can pick out the um, How Does Your Garden Grow, the thematic unit on plants, or the Endangered Animal Research, or the Let's Write About Easter Craftivities or the Project Based Learning Recycling. Um, now, if you already have all four of those, then you can pick out something else in my store that is of the same price or less, okay? So you just decide what you want and I'll send it to you. So thank you guys very much for joining me today. I hope that you got some new ideas for April. Um, again, um, this will be pre-recorded in the video section, so if you wanna go back and, re and watch it again, you are welcome to do that. In just a couple of minutes, I'm going to upload this into the Facebook group so you can download the uh, free webinar to get those clickable links. Um, and there, some of them are for Google Drive, on Google Drive, and some of them are to my store. So um, I hope that you guys had a great had a great weekend. I hope you're having a great Sunday. Have a good rest of the day. Um, stay tuned for my next webinar, which is going to be m April the 28th about Creative Fun for May. Um, and next, I'm excited to share with you my new webinar um, on that date. So you guys have a great rest of the day, and I will see you soon. Okay, love you guys. Bye-bye.